So, what would be a number that um, Labour would be content with on migration? Well, we don't... We're not going to offer a target or offer a particular number with respect to migration. I think the speech yesterday from uh, the Home Secretary criticising the policies of the Home Secretary and the Tory government was extraordinary, this kind of let-them-pick-fruit uh, message. We've definitely got labour shortages in the economy, and this morning we've got the unemployment stats again. Unemployment has gone up, vacancies have Only gone down. Only a bit. But employment overall is lower than it was pre-pandemic, but really worrying it. There's 2.6 million people now, that's a record, out of work for reasons of sickness. That's a reflection of the desperate state of our NHS. But we also know from surveys that many of those people would return to work with the right type of help. So I proposed welfare reforms to the benefit system to give people an into-work guarantee. But also I put forward proposals to change the way in which we give people employment support in this country, bring together health services and employment job centre services to give people the real tailored help and confidence to move into a good paid job. So I'm proposing changes to actually get Britain working again, to get people back into work. I'm not satisfied with leaving people on the margins as the Conservatives are. Would you change the immigration rules so that uh, workers in Europe can come to the UK so that we don't see um, fruit, etc., rotting in the field? Well, we've proposed a points-based system to the immigration, immigration system. You are going to have immigration as part of your mix. We know, for example, that our social care sector, uh, desperately short of people, that's always relied on international recruitment. Uh, same with our NHS. But what we should also be doing is investing in skills and training. But what about so, low-skill workers yeah, coming yeah, to do those yeah, jobs yeah, but in the that NHS, Brits don't want to do? Uh, well, in the NHS and the social care system, look, uh, we've put forward in the Labour Party a really substantial set of policies to train the next generation of nurses, healthcare assistants, paramedics, midwives and doctors so we can rebuild our NHS, so we can put... so we can get the doctors and nurses on the front line. And our young people, that's a great opportunity for our young people in this country. And I think you've got to be ambitious for the country. I love this country. And you've got to be ambitious for the people of this country. And I think messages that are coming out from this, this Tory conference that we're seeing over these last couple of days, where you've got Tory MPs using uh, you know, phrases which are usually associated with anti-Semitism. You've got that guy, Andrew Bridgen, turning up. who got kicked out of the Tory party. You've got Tories saying expanding childcare is unconservative. Well, Rishi Sunak's got to condemn this conference. And if he doesn't condemn this conference and those who have attended it, I think you can conclude it's the modern face of the Tory party. OK, the former Justice Secretary sat where you were an hour ago, said that we should allow low-skilled workers from Europe into the country in order to pick fruit. Well, you're always going to have... You know, Do you think we should? Uh, you're always going to have uh, an immigration system which has to be aligned with the needs of your economy, and that's why it should be point points based. But I'm making an argument that we should be investing in people with skills and training and we should be reforming the benefit yeah, but system. I'm asking you specifically about unskilled workers coming in to do those jobs that Brits don't want to do and if they don't come in we'll see uh, fruit rotting in the field. Well to a certain extent you're going to have people are going to come to this country and do and do some of these uh, uh, do, do some of these jobs. But I'm making a but bigger they're not argument allowed about to at the moment. Uh, sorry? They're not allowed to at the moment. Well well to a certain extent you know you're still going to have you're still always going to have um, some of that. But fundamentally, what we need to be doing is preparing for the economy of the future. We should be, there's going to be great new jobs in the future in, in green energies, in AI, and I want to be investing in the skills and the talents of people today to prepare us for the future. But that's not happening with our welfare system. It's not happening in our job centre system. I want to be a welfare reforming work and pension secretary to change the system so people's talents can take them as far as possible. Do you think that Europeans who live in the UK uh, and pay taxes in the UK should be allowed to vote in a general election in the UK? Well, they can already vote for their local general councils. General election. Their local council. So that has been a proposal that has been... What do you uh, think? Uh, has been, well, it's something to be, that is getting looked at. Uh, yeah, but um, what do you think? Uh, well, there's an argument that if someone's lived here for... Uh, uh, 20, 30 years and pays their taxes here and has a family here, their children go to their local schools. There's an, there is, there is a, an argument as to whether they should have that right. That is something that is being, being looked you... at. Well, it's, it's worth looking at it. It's something that should be looked at, but it's not a, it's not a, uh, you know, a, um, a, you know, a, a define a particular policy that has been put forward. But it's something that should it would be looked at. Would make a big at. difference to Labour come uh, any future election. Well, uh, well, I don't know about that. Is that true?
I think it would. I think that probably they would be voting for you rather than for the Conservative Well, I'm not sure about that. I don't know. And certainly I mean... the youngsters, 16 and 17-year-olds. Was it Churchill who said if, you, um, if you're under 30 and you vote uh, Conservative, you have no heart? But if you're over 30, you have no brain. Uh, um... Or the other way around. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. Something... But basically, young people vote Labour. I thought it was Dennis Healy, but I think anyway, you might have I, I think all I think these politicians have it. said something similar the point throughout is, history. Are young people vote Labour? Uh, well, do they? I mean, look. I mean, I do think there's an argument for younger people. Younger people can um, uh, join the army and things like that. Um, they can go to work and pay their taxes. I think there is an argument for looking again at whether younger people, 16, 17 year olds, should be able to vote. Uh, it's something that uh, I know when I talk to younger people that they, they would want to vote. And I'll tell you something, if you come to my colleges in, in Leicester uh, and you talk to 16 and 17 year olds, they are engaged, they've got uh, strong opinions. I wouldn't presume they would necessarily vote Labour, by the way, they have very strong opinions about what the country should and shouldn't be doing. And uh, they're very, <laughs> the 16 and 17 year olds in my constituency are very intelligent young people.